Welcome, Chad Block here in Blacksburg, Virginia for the 92nd FFA State Convention. All of our students here engaged in training sessions and competitions. All of these competitions, we call them career development events, have me thinking about preparations how, and how I can further incorporate competition prep into my classroom curriculum. It's not that difficult when I consider that the competitions are based on state and national curriculum. With this in mind, I want to share something with you today about types of curriculum. There are several types of curriculum, but we're going to focus on just three of them, planned, implemented, and hidden. The first one should sound pretty simple, and it is in theory. The planned curriculum is just that. It is what we plan to teach. It is in our lesson plans, it might be part of a departmental plan, and it might even be part of a district plan. Each year we set academic goals for our schools, ourselves, and our classes. We take these goals and we get out our academic calendars and we plan our curriculum. We may do this from the top down or from the bottom up. This is another type of curriculum that we will not discuss in great detail, but it warrants mentioning. It is called a traditional curriculum. But what does it mean to go from the top down or the bottom up? We may plan our curriculum based on where we want our students to be at the end of the year or upon graduation. In this top down approach, we work our way down through the curriculum to ensure that the desired learning has taken place. Most of us might be more familiar or comfortable with the typical bottom up where we start at the basic level of understanding and work our way up and build upon what the students already know. Either way works, they're just different approaches to reach the same goal. What happens though when we don't get to all the topics or lessons we planned? We are then looking at the actual implemented curriculum. How many of us have reached the end of a year or semester and realize we are not going to get through everything we had planned. I certainly have. Then we begin to adjust and prioritize the remaining lessons and days. We might not be able to spend as much time on certain topics as we would desire. This implemented curriculum is what we actually teach compared to what we intended or planned to teach. This implemented curriculum represents how effective we have been at allocating our time and resources and how well we planned out the lessons. The implemented curriculum can then be reviewed for the next academic year or semester to make adjustments so that we can more accurately plan the intended curriculum. We now get to the fun part, the hidden curriculum. This is usually not planned for. This curriculum often arises from the response of a student or a special interest. A teacher may find that students have a special interest in a subject and decide to pursue it further than originally planned. This may just be an extended discussion or it could also be an extra credit assignment. It may come from a current event that expanded or changed the intended message. The content or direction of a lesson could change as a result of something a teacher or student saw or read in the news. Current events can easily alter the lesson or narrative on a topic as they prevent, present new relative information. There is also the occasional rabbit hunt where a student is crafty enough to get the teacher off topic. Nothing wrong with encouraging a student's interest, but we need to realize when enough is enough and get back on track. So, how do we ensure that the planned curriculum actually becomes the implemented curriculum? That's a good question to consider. Some of this will come with experience. As I mentioned earlier, when we sit down at the end of the year and reflect on how well we implemented the curriculum, we should be able to recognize where we can improve. When planning a curriculum, it is also important to look at the academic calendar for the school. Look at the standardized testing dates, teacher work days, exam days, assemblies, and other dates that will shorten or distract from planned activities. We then need to consider what it is we need to accomplish. Are we preparing for a standardized test or certification? If so, we need to plan for benchmark tests or checkpoints. These can help ensure comprehension prior to moving on, but they can also help us plan our time. We will know we have to teach certain lessons prior to these dates. I teach agriculture, so much of my content is planned around the weather and the seasons. For example, I teach a forestry unit that includes tree physiology and tree identification. I will begin my forestry units early enough so that when the trees begin to bud out in the spring, we can go out and do tree identification. We also compete in forestry, so I need to complete these lessons prior to the competitions. We have competitions that begin in September and continue progressively throughout the year so the competition materials need to be introduced early and then built upon as we move through 
making sure the students reach certain milestones by a certain time. Some of this results in the hidden curriculum because the students that are competing will sometimes take the class beyond the required content and into what they need for their competitions. While we do practice after school, it is also good to expose the other students to the opportunities available to them. For those that are not going to put in the extra effort after school, this can be valuable to expand their thought processes and skill sets. When planning a curriculum, it is also important to set a timeline and publish it to the students. This will allow the students to get an idea about the pace. These timelines are actually referred to as pacing guides. These pacing guides help everyone stay on track. If we are moving faster than planned, we will have time for the hidden curriculum and be able to expand on some topics or entertain other student interests. When we are getting behind, we will need to ensure that we stay on pace and not get sidetracked. We can always come back and engage student interests later. We must be cautious, however, not to rush through content just to stay on track, which might cause a gap in understanding for the students later. We also do not want to speed through the curriculum so fast that we are looking at the end of semester or grading period and we've already covered everything. Then we will have to go back and plan additional curriculum just for the end of the year. Learning to plan a curriculum will take some time for most, but if we're dedicated to our profession, we will readily accept this task and become proficient at it. So, does that mean if we're not meeting our curriculum goals that we're not good teachers? Certainly not. It just means that we need to dig deeper. We may need to seek the assistance of veteran teachers or administrators. Classroom management can also affect our ability to complete a curriculum. Bad classroom management skills can result in reteaching content and prevent us from getting to all we planned. We have to be able to keep students on track if we intend to keep the curriculum on track. I hope you have enjoyed this brief synopsis on the three main types of curriculum.